So in my eight years of trading and helping thousands of traders, what I've realized is the biggest downfall of any trader is their psychology. Now, I'm not talking about the generic stuff of trading is 99% psychology. I completely disagree with that. I don't think trading is 99% psychology, but I do think the biggest pitfall is a trader's mind. So let me elaborate on that. So first of all, my belief is it's not about what's more important. Is it your technicals or is it your psychology? And some people say technicals are 10%, psychology is 90%. Other people say, no, no, technicals is 90% and your psychology is just 10%. The reality is neither are true. What is true is you need a strong technical base. That is the foundation point, And that is 100% important to get right. Because if you're trying to focus on your psychology, build this amazing mind and all these wonderful traits that you use to be stoic, to control your mind, to control your emotions, address childhood traumas and all of these things that you're working on your psychology, but you have a non-profitable strategy. You haven't even tested it. You have no proof. You have no proof of concept. You're using bad confluences, but you're trying to build good psychology on it. It will never work. But what you have to realize is what is your problem? Is your issue, your trading technicals and your edge, or is your issue your psychology. So first of all, you have to make a strong edge that is proven by data that you've tested over time, that you've split tested, that you've stress tested, that you've tested in the live markets and over a large sample size, you've made a decision that yes, I have an edge and it's a proven edge. My technical edge is profitable. Now my job as a trader is to find a profitable edge and then follow my profitable edge. Now that following part is where psychology comes in because you may know I have a profitable strategy, but if I am not able to follow it because of my mind, because of fear, because of greed, because of all these other factors that we have that come and go, that can fluctuate from even the best of traders, that is the inability to follow your proven edge. And that's the human element. But that's where we work on our mind and we say, okay, I've built my technical foundation foundation. It's proven. It's solid. Now let me work above and build a house on it. Strong foundations of strong psychology. So it's in steps. First technicals, then psychology. But what I found is even when traders have mastered a technical edge, even when they found strong psychology, their biggest downfall is still their mind. And now what I mean by that is the element of emotion and discretion is by not having stability and understanding what your metrics should look like. For example, you might have great confluences, a great strategy, great entry models, great trade models and you might have great approaches for your psychology you might have great ways to control your emotions and mind but you are still a human and you still don't know what to aim for and you just come into the market thinking let me do the best i can let me see how much profit I can pull from the market, you know, as, as good as I can get. And you treat it like a performance sport where I come and I train and then I perform. And it's just, if I win the game 1-0 or 3-0 or 5-0, I'm just going for the best win I can. And trading is not the best approach because you haven't realized what is your aim? What is your metrics? I'm not just talking about profit targets. I'm talking about targets of all of the verticals that we have to play with. Remember, there is uncontrolled variables in the market and controlled variables. The uncontrolled are, for example, the market is going to do whatever it wants to do. We can't control that. Even if we believe we have the best strategy and that should be a sell because of all of the confluence I have, but it still goes bullish. The market is always correct. It's out of our control. So what is in our control? So there's only a limited amount of things in our control and it's usually our actions. So we can actually control our win rate. As controversial as it may seem, we are kind of taught to believe our win rate is given to us. Based on how good of a trader you are is where your win rate is. So a better trader is a trader with a better win rate. It's false. I'm sure all of you can have an 80% win rate if you just take a certain prime setup type that is aligned with the higher time frame, that is using time-based manipulations, that is using lower time frame entry models, and you're trading with trend. Just a model like that, that is aligned with the monthly time frame down to weekly, daily, H4, M15, M1 with intra-session volatility. A setup like that will have an 80% win rate. But how often does that setup come? That setup might come once a month. So then the goal of a trader is not just to have the best win rate because you've maximized the win rate vertical, but at the detriment of maximizing your win rate, you've lowered your trade frequency almost to barely being a trader. Now, some people are okay with that. They want to take a few trades a month, swing trader, and that's their model. But then you have a disparity that is a form of inefficiency. Now, another form of inefficiency can be, I might want to have a very high win rate and a low trade frequency, but I want it to be very high risk reward. So then you might go and say, okay, well, let me trade high risk reward. So I know that I have a low trade frequency. I have a high win rate. Let me go and trade high risk reward. Let me use these M1 confirmations and go for the best risk reward that I can. So you try and maximize the risk reward vertical. What you realize is when you try and squeeze out as much risk reward in a trade as you can, you are also going to take a lot more losses because you're going to be chasing these high risk reward setups that are very hard to determine unless you're very experienced and competent on M1. So your win rate will come lower chasing high risk reward. But beyond that, what you're also going to realize 
realize this, you're going to have huge inefficiencies in your profit taking. Because if you're going for that home run, if you're going for that killer trade, that one to 20 risk reward, 20% banked in one trade, what you realize is you have so many setups that went one to five risk reward and then reversed, came to break even, one to 10 risk reward, and then reverse back to break even, but you didn't take a partial. But what you realize is it will become a bell curve in your profit taking where you have some of your trades go slightly in profit and then break even. Some of your trades will go 50% to your profit target and then break even. Some of your trades will go 100% to your profit target and then maybe even beyond. So if you track that, what you realize is there's a few that go part of the way. Most go at least halfway and then a few go all the way. So when you realize if you're trading high risk reward, your optimal route is not to just hold full position size all the way to the end and try and get a big 1 to 20 risk reward. That's an inefficiency. If you now add in smart profit taking systems and partial taking systems, what you realize is if you follow your data and you follow your own bell curve, you realize exactly where on your bell curve it is optimal to take profit. So it might be at, let's say, one to three risk reward, you take a partial and a one to 10 risk reward, you take full volume and then you don't go for these home runs. So point being, it's kind of like a balancing act where you have a sliding scale of your win rate. If I want to have a very high win rate, I can, but I have a low trade frequency. If I want to have a very low win rate, I can take trades all day long, but I'm going to have a low win rate. So then there's the sweet spot. So for me, my personal sweet spot is I have trade models where I know this type of trade is an A plus setup, 80% win rate. This trade setup is about a 30% win rate because it's counter trend and it's not trading at the best time, not the best confluences. It's a 30% win rate. But if I have a good risk reward on that, maybe in certain situations, it makes sense to take that trade. So what I've realized is based on my scenario, if I'm up for the week, if I'm up for the month, then I can be a little bit more relaxed. If my win rate in the last 20 trades is become like 70% and I'm up, I'm in profit then I know I can afford to take hedges. Then I know I can afford to scale in. Then I can afford to take less probable setups because I'm playing the risk reward game because I have a buffer in my win rates. I like to keep my win rate between 45 and 55%. If my win rates are now creeping up to 70%, I can start to take these low probability counter trend hedge trades. I will bring my win rate back into my preferred buffer, but these setups allowed me to catch high risk reward trades, some of them being losses, but it's within my controlled range. I'm within my controlled range of my win rates. I'm maximizing my risk reward and profit taking and I'm playing the levels of win rates, risk reward, trade frequency, risk management and profit taking systems and you realize it's all a dancing act between all of these variables. It's kind of like spinning all of these plates or filling all of these buckets and you need to know what to aim for. So what I recommend you do is not just have a strategy, not just have technicals, not just have psychology, not just have confluences and try and just trade it and hope for the best. No. A great trader realizes that you are in control of all of these things so you can decide what to do based on your situation. If you're going through a losing streak, modify things. If you're going through a winning streak, modify things because you know that these are your variables to play with. If I know that the market is becoming very choppy, we're just going through a consolidated phase on a higher time frame. The market is not trending. Then I know that my high probability setups are not going to be apparent. And therefore I know that there's only lower quality setups present. So then I'll intentionally lower my trade frequency and go for the higher win rate setups. But then if I know that the market is trending and I know that there's a plethora of opportunities, then I'll go with these less probable setups because I know that I can take my A plus setups that bring my average win rate up. It's about knowing your dynamics. If I'm going through a losing streak, I better stick to my A plus setups because I don't want to go on tilt, have all these bad emotions and spiral. It's about knowing where you're at. So what I want to do is tell you my personal metrics and targets. And then I want you to go ahead and think about yours and what yours should be. But my ones are like this. So I only trade two pairs, Euro USD and GBP USD. I've done that for the last three years now, and I haven't missed a single candle on the M1 timeframe during a London session or a New York session. M1 timeframe on those two pairs. I'm deeply immersed in that. My trading windows are exclusively my London window, which is about one hour and my New York window, which is about one hour. So I have about two hours of trading per day. So two opportunities per day on two pairs. So I have up to four opportunities a day. Now, not all of them will be valid days not all of them will be valid trades, but I can allow myself up to usually about 10 trades per week. That is kind of like my sweet spot. If I'm doing 20 trades a week, I think I'm over trading. If I'm doing just two or one, one or two trades per week, unless it's a very choppy situation where I've decided to take a step back, I've probably under traded or not looked at opportunities correctly. So I know that my trade frequency is controlled. My win rate is controlled at 45 to 55%. And I introduce better quality setups or worse quality setups, depending on where my win rate is to control it within my preferred buffer, because I know that I don't want to just then go for the highest win rates because I don't want to lose out on trade frequency. So I keep it in my sweet spots, the Goldilocks zone. Same for comes to risk reward. Some people think, let me just go simple one-to-one, one-to-two risk reward, which has its virtue. Other people think higher risk reward is better. Let me go for these one to 30 trades. Then it's very 
very inefficient because you're going to be taking a lot of losses and you're also going to have inefficiencies in your profit taking because you were hoping for the one to 20, but it reversed at one to 10. Then you missed out completely. So what I realized is for me, my risk reward is fixed with my partial protocol system. So at one to three risk reward, I will take 50% of my position size. At one to 10 risk reward, I'll take the full volume off. Even if that trade could have been a one to 30, one to 50, doesn't matter. I've optimized my trading and profit taking and risk reward for my data. I've taken over a thousand trade sample size. I've back tested it. I've stress tested it. And I found that this is optimal for my strategy, my entry models or my trading type that is best for me. Next, I know the confluences that I'm using. I've controlled them. I've made all of my confluences into a list and then I've deployed them as trade models. And I know my preference is to trade for intercession volatility. So I have my key windows of trading and my goal is to go from one manipulation to the next liquidity pool. And that usually aligns with my one to three and one to 10 risk reward partial system. When it comes to risk management, another thing in your control, you should have systems and strategies in place. So I myself am a very conservative trader. I have systems where if I want to be more scaling, if I want to go for prop firm challenges, I'll have risk management systems in place. Go ahead and check my foolproof golden bullet strategy to guarantee you pass a prop firm challenge. If you have a few controlled variables, like a good strategy and a reasonable win rate, this golden bullet strategy is a risk management tool that I coded into Excel that will guarantee you can pass a prop firm challenge as long as you don't have 10 losses in a row, which I'm sure most of you can do. So go ahead and check that video out. But it just goes to show that risk management is another thing we can control. And it's another bullet in our chamber that we can fire and deploy as needed. So once you start to master all of these and you know your numbers and you know your metrics of what you're aiming for, then you'll start to realize if I've controlled my win rate, I've controlled my risk reward, I've controlled my trade frequency, profit taking, risk management, and then optimizations for intercession volatility or optimizations for manipulations, entry types, confluences, trade models. Once you've done all of that work, now you are no longer just a guy that wants to have a strategy and make the best he can. Because then you realize with all these controlled variables, you should know what an average month looks like. You're not going to have these pendulum months where one month is negative 5%, another month is positive 50%, another month is plus 2%. No, no. You should have stability in your equity curve too. Obviously, the market is going to give you opportunities and it's dependent on that, but you should not have these huge swings when you've controlled your data, you've controlled your controllables. You should know what your average month outcome should look like as well. So to conclude, if you've taken the step in your journey to not just focus on your technicals and psychology, but actually focus on this data and these numbers and really maximizing your control variables and realizing they're intertwined, that maximizing one version vertical diminishes another one. Maximizing your win rates ruins your trade frequency. So it's a delicate dance to find your sweet point. If you go ahead and find your sweet point and balance out all of these factors and list them out and make a strategy to make everything maximized and optimized for this system, as opposed to just optimizing for risk reward or optimizing for win rates or optimizing for one, we optimize for all of them. You go holistic and you go macro. That is where you have the best trading breakthroughs. Of course, your technicals are needed. That's stage one. Then your psychology is needed. That's stage two. And then optimization and being a holistic trader. That is stage three. And I think that is what makes a great trader. So I do hope you enjoyed that video and I hope it makes sense. Now, what I want you to do is not only go ahead and check that golden bullet strategy that I made the Excel spreadsheet and I actually give that spreadsheet away for free. What I want you to do is go ahead and follow my private Instagram. So I have a private Instagram. It's free. You just have to request access and hope my team accepts you where I'll be giving in this trade club. I'll be giving my trades, my trade breakdowns, daily analysis. I'll be doing lives. I'll be doing Q and A's and I'll just be giving back to you guys. If you want to have real day to day access to me, go ahead and request that account. Now, my team only accepts a few amounts of people per day and they accept no weirdos. If you're a fake account, a ghost account, if you're a guru or a mentor, you'll be rejected. But if you're a real honest trader, just looking to learn and improve, go ahead and request a follow to that account. Uh, and that's where we can really speak on a more individual and personal level. And we can just grow and you can see more insights on how I think and trade. So ladies and gents, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I want to see you inside the free trade club. Just search Wakar Asim Unfiltered and I'll give my unfiltered thoughts, my unfiltered everything and show you the reality of what it looks like to be a trader that's been doing this full-time for many many years and as always ladies and gentlemen catch you in the next one